Tony, can you tell me how uh, you came to Medellin and what you found here that uh, you you can find anywhere else? Well, I was looking to I was looking to to leave the United States for a long time. I was not happy in the United States for political reasons, for ethical reasons, things like that. And I was I had looked at Latin America for a long time, different different places, not ever really seriously, but I'd thought about living in Argentina, I thought about living in Mexico. But then just a series of hap of events um, led me to Medellin. But I guess maybe one of the questions is why was I looking at living elsewhere? And I mean, in the United States, we all know that there are lots of problems, social problems as well as political problems, things like that. But I always, but for a long time personally, I had felt that there was a very, there was a huge, um, huge amount of disconnect in the people from in the middle class, uh, in upper middle class, with the people who, uh, with poor people, with. Uh, people without education, uh, illiterate people, people had to really look for opportunities to encounter um, those situ situations. And when I traveled in Latin America, one of the things that I always found or felt was that one didn't have to go very far to encounter those situations. When on the street you see more people on the street. Um, when you talk to people you hear about children and young people that uh, don't know how to read or don't know how to write. Um, but the other thing that uh, impact in the really made it, uh, an impact on me was the, there was a sort of, I guess, a per perverse honesty about the problems that were here. You know, there's a sort of, um, everybody, there's, I can't think of anybody that I know in any social situation that says that corruption doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it exists here. Everybody knows that there's violence here. There's no, there's very few people that really deny that. Whereas in the United States, for me, that there was a huge sense of denial. And I need, as a person, as an individual, I need to feel um, that there's a certain amount of reality in my life, a certain balance where I can feel like there's, yes, I'm, de I'm dealing with a, a certain sense of awareness of what the human condition, more about what the human condition is about in, in, in the world, not just in my little bubble in the United States. And here I felt like I had a little more contact with that in Medellin. Mm -hmm. That could happen in Peru, it could happen in Mexico, it could happen in different places. For me, it was important to come here because I had a I had made a, con a series of contacts, I had made a network of friends, I had made a network of um, colleagues. And so when I started this project, it gave me an opportunity to think that I was uh, at least having some sort of a positive impact in, in that situation, as well as on a personal level being in contact with, um, with situations that aren't, aren't ideal, but um, I need, for me personally, I need to be in contact with those situations, and so that was why I decided to come here. One of the reasons, but the other, one of the other reasons in terms of Medellin as a city, I love the geography, while the city itself I don't find that beautiful, but the geography I think is really interesting. I love the fact that I can sit here and see the buses going up on the other side of the, of the, of the valley there. Huh. A bit uh, difficult to see from yeah, here. Yeah, maybe on the other side of the column. No, it's the sun is. Yeah, the sun makes it hard. <laughs> but when I first came to Medellin, I always thought I thought that this valley was like an opera house in a way because you can stay here. I can sit here sometimes when the sun isn't in my eyes and see the buses going up and down the other side mm -hmm. of the valley. And it seems like a it's a long valley, but this makes it seem small. It's like a being in a theater or something. So I really liked that aspect of it. And then the other thing that really uh, attracted me was when I first came here, I started meeting artist collectives. And the energy that, that you find in Medellin, especially in what I found in 2001, even when I first started coming here, was in spite of the fact that there were lots of conflicts going on. And this was in the time when the Comuna Trece was really start, still very hot. Um, uh, Operacion Orion had already taken place, but it was still really a conflict zone, lots of problems. But in spite of that, artist collectives were, with their own money, were publishing newspapers, were 
doing lots of things that really you had to go to the big cities in the United States to find. And here it was just people doing things um, very spontaneously. And so the, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit or the, was super high here and it still is. Uh, there's so many artists or cultural collectives or artistic collectives here in Medellin, it's, it's impressive. And so just that um, can-do attitude um, also was very important to me. So I thought I, I, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to see, feel like I could participate in it, con contact it, and, and get to understand the dynamic a little bit in the context of all the history of the city, too. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was surprising, in a way. It's a city of kind of conflicts, or not conflicts, but contradictions. Um, there's a lot of... Un a lot of lack of trust among people because of the historic situation, I think. Mm -hmm. and without being a psychologist or sociologist, I'm not sure, but but at the same time, there's this ex extreme entrepreneurial spirit where people want to do things to contribute to the neighborhood, and specifically, most of the time, it's they're very locally oriented, a lot of community-based uh, project projects. And so there's these kind of dichotomies and paradoxes that I thought were really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what really brought me here, were those two things. There's things that I don't like about the city, of course, you know, but, um, but those are the things that brought me here. And just in ten words, if you can, uh, what about uh, local politics? How do you think the city is uh, managed? Is it uh, good? Right now, the city, uh, fortunately, has, well, The, the current mayor, I think, is a pretty good mayor. He's uh, a little bit neutral in some respects, but, but for us, because the secretary that has the most effect on what we do is the secretary of culture, and she's been very progressive and very good. And the city and the, and the federal government, actually, in Colombia, is trying to uh, look for ways to support this, these initiatives that I was mentioning earlier um, without forcing them to go through all the legal... Um, hurdles to become a foundation or to establish themselves as a legal entity. So they're trying. So in that sense, I think it's a really positive. Um, the, the last three administrations have been good in that way. They're trying to help these initiatives. They don't. I think that the city recognizes its own bureaucratic limitations to a certain extent, and so what they're doing is they're looking at these organizations as people that are making impacts on the community on a very mm -hmm. grassroots level, and they're trying on a bureaucratic level to to find. Um, mechanisms to support those activities. It's not easy for them, but they're, I think that they're trying to do that. I think that one of the things that I think many places in the world suffer from is the discontinuity from one administration mm -hmm. to the next. And for, it's just been a matter of luck that uh, even though the politics vary slightly between um, Sergio Fajardo, um, Alonso Salazar, and now uh, Hannibal Gaviria, they've They have different, slight differences, but they're all basically from the same lineage. And I think that that's really helped in the last 10 years, 8 to 10 years, in, in having a vision for the city that's, um, that's not so varied from administration to administration that there can't be a continuity in projects. And, and that has really been, been a good thing. But, you know, we have to recognize the reality that if the administration does change radically in terms of its politics, then mm -hmm. all of that could be gone, you know, very quickly, so. Okay, thank you again. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.